Welcome back team. Today we're doing another intermediate level body weight workout. So you don't need any equipment for this one. Um, if you'd like to skip straight through and just fly by the seat of your pants, check the chapter markers below. You'll have a link to the start of the workout there. Um, otherwise, I will run through the movements now. So you have a little bit of a tutorial on, on how to do these. Um, if you aren't quite at the intermediate level, if you find this one's a bit hard, feel free to check out more of the green workouts, the green ones which you can actually uh, find on YouTube. And the purple ones are a step up from this. So if you'd like something a bit more challenging, look for those. Okay, so the first movement we're doing today, you can see it here in this 41 minute workout, are Cossack squats. So Cossack squats, the first round, we're actually gonna do them for a little bit, little bit uh, more tame, and then we'll get a bit more advanced as the workout moves on. What you're gonna do, basically stand like I am. Nice wide stance. Um, with the Cossack squats, we're gonna try to, try to go as wide as possible. It's a single leg squat, and we're gonna basically pivot on our, on our heels. So this is what it looks like in a squat down one direction. You see the heels down, toe points towards the ceiling. We're gonna bring it up to the top in between each squat. So this is the first level. This is level one Cossack squat, okay? You're gonna feel it in the adductors. You're gonna keep your chest and your head upright. Stretch in that hamstring and the adductors on that straight leg. And a lot of power required in the quads and the glutes of the bent leg in order to stand yourself up there. So you see, I'm not hinging at the hip too much. I'm keeping my chest and my body upright. I'm gonna get down as low as I can. If you go down low and you can't get yourself up, you've gone beyond that point of no return. Just remember where that is, because I'd like you to go to that point where you, you, you're just able to stand up and then push yourself up from there. And you'll find that as you continue doing this more and more, you're gonna to get to the point where you can actually sit all the way down on your heel, get back up after that. So that's your Cossack squat. After Cossack squat, we're doing dive bombers. Now this is a push-up variation. So we're gonna start off on the floor in a push-up position. So hands flat on the floor. You're gonna spread your feet so they're nice and wide and push yourself into a downward dog position. So from here, we're gonna dive bomb our nose, our chest, and then our, our hips onto the floor as if you're going underneath a barbed wire fence. So dive bomb down, squeezing the glutes, nice straight legs, pushing the chest upright, keeping the hips down low like a cobra. And then we're gonna go in reverse. Reverse that bomber. So now dive bomb down, up and under, and then pushing back through. So lots of strength and mobility in the shoulders for this one. Squeezing the glutes, nice hamstring flexibility as well. So we're gonna do those for 45 seconds with a 30 second break in between. Now, after the dive bombers, we're gonna get into jump lunges. Jump lunges take a little bit of uh, practice. So if you'd like, just, just work with step forward lunges to begin with. So forward lunge, back, forward lunge, back. For the first round, I don't mind if you do these forward lunges, but once you get used to it and once you feel like you've got a little bit of extra energy, Start off in this lunge here. What you're gonna do is jump up with both feet, switch the lunge posture, and land with both feet at the same time, okay? So what I mean by that, we're gonna jump up, land, up, land. If you have problems with your balance, if you find that you're, you're flipping and forward left and right a little bit, what you can do is keep a spread in your feet. So you see how I've got my feet about shoulder width apart? If I land like that, you see immediately I'm, I'm off balance because my one foot is in front of the other. Try and keep some separation between the feet. That's gonna help with your balance there. Cool, so important thing with that, take off with both feet at the same time, land with both feet at the same time there. After our jump lunges, we've got steam engines. So standing upright, fingertips at the temple. We're gonna kick one knee up, cross body, touch the elbow, bring it down. Easy, very, very simple premise. Couple of rules here are that you're gonna try and keep your neck and your head upright. Do not bend your spine down. You're standing tall, looking forward this whole time. If your knee doesn't meet your elbow, doesn't matter, I'd like you to try. It's that intent of trying to get your knee up to the elbow that gets, you, gets the work in today. So after steam engines, one, two, knee shuttle. This is a new one. It's a complex and it's thrown together purely to get your heart rate up, okay? So we're gonna start off on the left-hand side. We've got room on our right. What I'm gonna do is a one, two, knee, shuttle across twice, touch the toe. One, two, knee, shuttle across, down. <laughs> knee, shuttle across, down. One, two, knee, shuttle across, down. 
combination movement, like I said, purely to get the heart rate up. So it's agility, it's changing direction, throwing hands, throwing a knee, changing, reaching down. You'll get the hang of that one as you, as you push through. After that, we've got the classic burpee, okay? So burpee, speaking of carbonated beverage, excuse me, starting standing up. What we're gonna do is squat down, hands on the floor, thrust those legs back, perform the push up. As you come up, kick your, your legs in so that you bring your hands up to, or your feet up to your hands. Land in the bottom of a squat, full hip extension jump, hands over the shoulders as you jump up. Down and just form a rhythm and repeat. If you're not at the stage where you're doing these full burpees like this, two things, practice, number one. Second thing, you may want to drop back to these green workouts, the beginner workouts there. Um, I think at this level of the game, at this blue level, you should be able to be doing full burpees. If not, it doesn't mean that we don't have any workouts for you. Drop to the greens, and then when you're feeling good, bump back up to this one. <clears throat> After burpees, we've got the invisible jump rope. Pretend you've got a jump rope in your hands. You don't actually. And we're just gonna jump up and down, rotating our wrists as if we've got that rope. Jumping high enough that you're gonna clear a rope should you have one in your hands. After jump rope, the final movement today is the kick through. It's the cousin of the kick sit, starting in the panther position, hands on the floor, toes on the floor, knees off the floor, okay? From here, I'm gonna raise my right hand, kick through with the left leg, sitting down, straight leg, this right knee pointing towards the ceiling, as is my hand, you see that? Bring it back to the panther position. Left hand, right foot, back. So this is the kick through and just join it together into a sequence there. So that's our whole workout. 45 seconds on, 30 seconds rest. You see the ratio of work to rest there has slightly increased. Pop in your watches into cardio mode if you've got the heart rate strap there and ready to go. We've got that count in, let's go. <clears throat> 20 seconds. Oh, it's gonna talk to me. I might actually turn that off real quickly. <laughs> I forgot that uh, by default, it gives us uh, a voice. So I'm gonna turn that off. It's gonna be single beat short. And we're gonna just bring that up slightly. A little beeps. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just gonna re-record that bit. So now we're gonna press our go buttons on the watches and we're gonna, there's our beep, nice. 20 seconds, we're gonna start off with, with Cossack spots. Decoy, how you doing, mate? How's things? You're here for the workout, you're just in time. <clears throat> we're gonna start off with our nice wide feet here. And from the wide feet, we're gonna drop down to one direction, keeping that foot flat on the floor, but our heel on the other side remains flat, toe pointed towards the ceiling, and bring it up. So we're gonna meet at the top in this wide foot stance with both feet flat on the floor. I wanna start timing my breathing now as well. So it's quads, it's glutes. There's some really, really good hamstring flexibility here as well. We're starting to warm up our adductors, which we're gonna need a bit later for the, <clears throat> the shuttle runs as well. 10 more seconds here, team. And then we've got a, a 30 second rest. So get those legs warmed up. Nice. Good, good, good. I think that beeps a little bit loud. Just bring it down a touch. Cool. <clears throat> okay, what dive bombers. So remember what I told you, the dive bomber is a, is a variation of a push up. It's gonna turn this fan on. It's a bit warm in here. There we go, cool. Three, two, one, hands on the floor, wide feet, starting the downward dog. We're gonna get our chin, chest, and hips down, and then back up in reverse. So take it nice and slow. This first round is all about the mobility. It's all about warming up. Now, the best type of warm up to do for movements is slow and controlled, but also dynamic. And a dynamic warm up is always the best warm up because what we're doing, we're actually moving our, our body through the range and we're starting to get the blood pumping as well. 
So just getting that whole body warm up. Awesome. So shaking the arms out. Feeling that a little bit after yesterday. We did a bench press yesterday. Triceps are a little bit fatigued, but we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through. <clears throat> How's the heart rate, everyone? Jump lunges. This is one where the heart rate's definitely gonna go up. So I'm gonna start off with this round. We're just gonna start off with about half of them as step forward lunges, and then the other, the next half after that, full jumps, okay? So here we go. I'm just gonna start to get the hips warmed up. I wanna get into the motion of doing a lunge whilst keeping my body upright. I'm not hinging at the hips. So like I said, 45 seconds. So when there's 25 seconds left, or thereabouts, I'm gonna flip these over to jump lunges. Cool. Okay, 20 seconds, let's go. Lunge, we're gonna jump. A lot of power required in both legs here to perform that jump and land. Jump and land, good. Nice, take a break. And you see there, we're in the green now. So we're getting that heart rate up, get into the aerobic zone. <laughs> Excuse me, steam engines. This is a really good one. Maintain that heart rate, up. So, find a spot in the middle of the room. Stand tall, breathing into the belly. Fingertips at the temples and start on the beep, kick it up. You see, I'm keeping my head upright. Big high knees, so I can get the knee all the way up to the elbow. I'm rotating my elbow forward, but I'm not dropping it down at all. Hey, thanks for the follow, mate. Welcome in. You've caught us in round one of this four round workout. Here we go. Nice, nice. Good question, decoy. Good question. Um, when we do finish the workout, remind me that you've got a question on the queue and we can talk about that. <clears throat> so where we are right now, I'm in zone three. So you can see down there, I've got a, a circle just here. Circle with five segments in it, each one denoting the zone that I'm in with my heart rate. So we're in this one, two, knee, shuttle across. It doesn't matter which one you go, left or right, as long as you're doing different on each side. So one, two, knee, shuttle, bang. One, two, I'm doing the inner knee, shuttle, down. Knee, shuttle across, two steps, down. Knee, shuttle, down. Left, right, right knee, shuttle, down. Right, left, left knee, shuttle across, down. Find a rhythm. Down. Exhaling on the strike. Nice. That's a good one. Always gets the heart rate up. Good, good, good. <clears throat> Do you have a heart rate monitor decoy? Do you have something with which you measure your heart rate with? <laughs> Bad English, Jeff. Okay, we've got burpees to do. Now burpees always gets the heart rate up for me. We'll see how high we can go with this one. It's an intermediate level, so I don't mind if we dip into the orange. Let's go. One, bang. Forty-two. Apple Watch, yeah, fair enough. 
<laughs> Making it fun to get into the zones. That's hopefully what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you never work out decoy. There's, there's something for you to scan. You got your, you got your phone. If you're watching this on, on your PC, scan that QR code. It'll bring you to the playlist where all of the FFP workouts are on YouTube. Here we go. And we're in that orange zone. Very, very important zone. We've got the jump ropes now. Remember I said, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope. So we're pretending we have jump ropes here. Nice decoy. Good, 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 good. So what we're trying to do in this green zone, we're gonna talk a bit more about this after the workout. But the green zone here, generally denoted by being in between 70 and 80%. <clears throat> some manufacturers, some ecosystems will actually have a different color. Sometimes it's yellow in this zone. Good. So sometimes you'll see either gray, blue, green, orange, red, or you'll see blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So the first three zones can sometimes be a different color. But if you talk about them in, in numbers, so zone two and zone three are kind of like your endurance slash aerobic zones. So that's where you should be able to, you should be able to put a lot of work out, you know, or you, actually you'll get a lot of time, a lot of endurance from what you're doing because you're not pushing so hard that you're actually approaching the limits of fatigue of your body. Fatigue can be defined in a few different ways, but the fatigue in terms of respiratory and uh, metabolic fatigue, they happen in the, in the orange and the red zones there. Five more seconds, keep it going. Nice, good, full minutes rest now. Full minute rest, so you got some time. What I want you to do is start uh, walking around. I'm just gonna get a bit more airflow. There we go, that's better. Yeah, so decoy, um, I'm not 100% sure how Apple does it, but um, I can answer your question, I can start to answer your question now. It's probably worth doing during the recording. You have a look down here at the actual heart rate readout. You see, I've got the zones, I've got the number in the middle, but down the bottom here, this one, I've got the percentage. And what that is, that's a percentage of maximum heart rate. <clears throat> that is, what percent am I of what my theoretical or in practice maximum is? So sometimes when you see some discrepancies in, in uh, the zones, when you're using multiple different devices, Cossack squats, by the way, um, it's sometimes, or it's mainly, a discrepancy in, a, in the calculation of your maximum heart rate. If you've never done any sort of high intensity testing or workout, um, workout protocols in a laboratory, where they measure things like your lactate threshold or your VO2 max, those sorts of tests will actually give you a, a pretty close readout of your actual maximum maximum heart rate. So you can use that for your zoning calculations. Um, but if you've never done it, what a lot of systems will do is, you've probably heard of this one, the number 220 minus your age. And what that does is it gives you an estimate, it's a guess. It's a starting point to work with. Um, and that number there is your theoretical maximum heart rate. So the next step from that is actually to, to pick a method of zoning. Um, and the, the way that you'll see most, most um, data and most gadgets do this is by then taking that number that you calculated and then going 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100%, okay? Dive bombers. And that's how they zone it out. So yeah, one, two, three, four. 
And so it's not, it's definitely not an exact thing in terms of what zone your body's actually in a majority state of. And everyone's different as well. That's what should be noted, that everyone's gonna have a different maximum heart rate based on things like their actual stroke volume of their heart, how much, how, like, how strong it is, their VO2 max, so how much oxygen one pump of blood's able to push around your body, and even things like your, uh, your gender or your, your biological assigned at birth sex, um, women tend to have a slightly higher heart rate than men. Um, so lots of, lots of factors go into that, but it's a good starting point. And what you're aiming for is, is understanding, not that as soon as this color changes from green to orange, a magic switch in my body's flicking from aerobic to anaerobic. It doesn't quite work like that. It's, a, it's like a thresholdy kind of overlap. Yeah, jump lunges, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's not super accurate decoy. Um, and what I tend to do, and what a lot of apps will do these days, to be honest, if you buy a Garmin watch, or even the, even the heart rate, um, <clears throat> the heart rate stuff that I use for my group training, if it detects a new maximum heart rate in one of my clients, it actually says, hey Jeff, do you wanna update their profile to give them a new maximum heart rate number? And in turn, it then adjusts their zones with that as well. So I'm in the blue at the moment. It means aerobically, I could work a bit harder. So I wanna put a bit more effort into my output here. There we go. And you see, that's all it takes is for me to become a little bit distracted. I start not working as hard and my heart rate drops. Other things that can affect heart rate too, um, whether you're on caffeine or any other type of drug, they can affect heart rates. Um, <clears throat> anesthetics can affect your heart rate too. Uh, steam engines, let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm gonna try and keep it green and above. That's not to say I know exactly that I'm anaerobic right now, but for me, alcohol affects it a lot for you. Yeah, burn a bit. Yeah. Um, a lower average heart rate by a particular margin and multiple workouts might be a flag. <laughs> yes. Yes, Jafe. Exactly. So. That's what I'd be saying to people, because that's one thing I notice. When I've got new clients out there, so I notice this, I wish I could bring the, the data up on screen, <sighs> is that I went for a, ride, uh, a run with Grace and, a, and another client of mine, and we wanted to work on zoning. So I was trying to keep my client in the uh, zone three, and consistently what I'd be finding is that I was still in zone one. So while my client who was aerobically a lot, a lot newer than me, a lot less mature than me. They were, they were struggling at a pace, sitting in, in zone three, and I was just kind of like jogging along, and I was in zone one. So yeah, 100%, Jafe. <coughs> one, two knee shuttles. And you think about this one. <laughs> knee, shuttle across. <laughs> so if you find yourself doing a workout, <laughs> and the intensity, <laughs> I keep saying things like, okay, Jeff is in zone three, but you're in zone one, then you need to go up a color. You're gonna find yourself probably pushing towards the blues or the purples, or get more reps in. Stop talking and more reps. You did a workout after having one drink and your heart rate was considerably higher. Yeah, so that could also be Bernabé, if you understand how, how certain chemicals are metabolized. So alcohol itself is treated a little bit like a poison, it's treated as a toxin. And what's going on is that your, uh, your liver is actually breaking it down into usable, usable molecules for your muscles. So what's happening is that, okay, burpees, let's go. <clears throat> because alcohol generally presides in your blood, your heart rate is rising so that it can deliver 
as much blood as it can through that big old filter, the liver, so that the, the liver can do its work in, in breaking the toxins down into two things, metabolizable molecules. So things that it can, it can pass around and your muscles can use as fuel, or more toxins, which it then passes to your kidneys. So you can get rid of two play. It goes to your kidneys and to your bowels. So it actually passes them in, in those two directions. So if you didn't have uh, alcohol in your system there, what your body would be doing instead is actually pulling the fuel source from directly in your muscles. So number one, it pulls its first fuel from the cells, inside the cells, in the cytoplasm. Um, and the second place it pulls fuel from is the glycogen stored in your muscle fibers. Um, and then after that, once that's depleted, it asks your liver for some more from the backup storage. So jump rope. So you see when, when, uh, when you start to think about the body's actual biology, it makes sense that after drinking alcohol, you're actually gonna filter that off and use that to fuel your muscles first. So that's two things you should take note of, that it's gonna raise your heart rate because you're trying to pump around and filter as much blood as possible. But then also, all of that food that you've been eating as fuel, all the stuff that you've been tracking and all those macros you've been tracking that are broken down into, into glycogens and, and other things stored in your liver and your muscles, that's kind of out the window now because now your body is working to use this X toxin as a fuel, okay? So it kind of throws your calorie counting out the window as well, as well as things like your blood glucose levels and, and your bile production and stuff too. So alcohol's a little bit of a loose cannon, a little bit of a, a, little bit of a wild card, that one. Um, so well worth noting. Okay, let's see, kick throughs in, kick throughs. So you'll excuse me for going deep into the science with this, I am currently studying nutrition and I take every chance that I can get to, uh, to put the knowledge into conversation. Because for me, I find that I'm a, Jake might know this, what's the term for someone that has to use examples to learn a concept? Some people can, some people are auditory learners. They can hear someone talk about it and they learn it. Some people are uh, visual, you need, you need diagrams. If they see pictures, it's like, yeah, I remember that. For me, I kind of need to use it in conversation a couple of times to have the concept stick. I think that's why I often find I'm, I'm just talking crap all the time. Kinesthetic learning. Cool, Bernabé, thank you. Bernabé, got it. Yeah, kin kinesthetic learning is learning by doing. That's me. I'm a kinesthetic learner. Cool. Team, how are we going? Got the calorie count up, it's good. Um, one thing I've learned about these shoes now, if anyone's wondering why I've got funny looking ninja feet, I'm wearing barefoot shoes. Um, I probably could have, see you Jafe, I probably could have gone a size smaller. I am sliding around a bit, but then again, I haven't really, done much work in the way of tightening up these laces. So that's a thing. <clears throat> I will practice my running in these just after the workout though. So we can give a little bit of a, little bit of a review on barefoot shoes. It's feeling good with the workout though. So let's get these Cossack squats in. <clears throat> I would like to do some deadlifts and some squats in these, um, like, like actual weighted squats. The Cossack squats, I do feel my foot sliding forward just a little bit. So the heel's a little bit sloppy, just down there. But the actual mechanics of my body feel great. I'm able to spread my toes. And that's what you wanna do with these squats here. Watch my ankle. See the ankle mobility I've got? You wanna work on that. If you can't get very low, try and get your knee way in front of your toes. Try and get your butt all the way down to your heel. And then use the, the power in your quads and your glutes to push yourself up. Keep it going, keep it going. Five more seconds. Bring that up, down. Nice, good. Yes, I do have the toe socks on. Um, they are thin, 
I have to admit, they are some of my older, um, thinner toe socks. So that was the first thought that I had funky smell. If I wear my newer, thicker ones, they'll probably fill it out a little bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, funky smell, I'm glad you're here because you were the one I was thinking of. I'd like to, um, because you wear these quite often, or not these ones, but you wear barefoot shoes often. So you have a, a good feeling of what it's like in barefoot shoes to run, which I haven't for a long time. It's been about five years. Five years ago, I used to do a bit of barefoot running on, a, on tracks. I did do one 5K run on bitumen barefoot. Um, it was slow. I just wanted to do it to kind of see that I could do it, but I was very, very afraid of sharp rocks and you know debris that you find on the road, like discarded metal hardware, um, <coughs> screws and things, anything that can puncture a tire, you know what it's gonna do to a foot. So you watch out for that. Um, but yeah, the things you wanna watch out for, tendons, you just mentioned it there in chat, I just saw. There we go, gonna take a, take a break. Um, if your tendons are feeling it, funky smell, go easier. <coughs> tendons can take up to 10 times longer than muscles to heal. Um, that's, again, that's an that's a estimate. It's not that it's exactly 210 days versus 21 days, but the, uh, the sentiment is that you gotta give your tendons a lot more recovery time um, as opposed to muscles. Muscles you can give a couple of weeks and they're back to, back to normal. Um, jump on just let's go. Whereas tendons, take it easy, tend to take it easy. Because they're also like, they take longer to get strong. They also take a lot longer to repair. Um, main reason is that they don't have blood flow. They're not actually red tissue, they're white tissue. And the, the lack of blood flow around them means a lack of nutrients to be delivered. Get the heart rate up, Jeff. But I'm super happy, Funky Smell, because what it means is that you're actually setting yourself up for really, really strong tendon, strong form, strong running later on, um, which is good, which is good. As long as you can keep to your, your paces and not, not go overboard, not go too crazy, um, you're gonna, you're gonna do really well, yeah. All right. Oh, Grace has started her stream. Cool. All right, what time is it? I gotta be very careful as well because I do have some clients today. So after this workout, we're gonna do a short run. <clears throat> okay, steam engines, go. Slow and steady, absolutely. I found as well my heart rate monitor is digging into my chest a little bit. I did tighten it up because my chest had shrunk a touch, but I think I went a little bit too far. Up on my toes as well for this. You find that anything that you can do on your toes, you're also strengthening your calves and that all important Achilles tendon. Good, good. All right, heart rate, feeling nice. For that one, two, knee shuttle. In 20 seconds time. <clears throat> catching that heart rate, catching that breath. Starting over on this side. I'm gonna do the uh, right, left, right knee, and shuttle right. Left, right, left knee, shuttle left. Ready, ready, ready. Hands up, go. Speeding it up. Focus, focus, focus. Fine if I talk too much during this one. Lose focus, drop heart rate. Awesome, awesome. Burpees. 
Good stuff. Ah. Okay. Stand up tall, breathe into the belly. Getting ready for burpees. Gonna try and find a nice pace that I can maintain. Cool. Keep it going. Keep it going, everyone. Awesome. Well done, team. Catch my breath. Let's go. Good. Nice. How's everyone feeling? Good orange heart rate. <clears throat> mm. Hey Alec, you're at work? Good, good, good. All right, jump rope, let's go. Without doxing yourself, Alec, what do you do for work? Are you on a PC? Are you on a computer? Do you have time to fit workouts in while you're at work? Because um, this one here, this is the sort of workout that I used to do at the office at lunchtime. Software dev, cool. Do you work from home or do you work from an office? Because software dev, man, you can do that anywhere. Office, cool. Cool, well, offices are good. I like office. Um, you, get, you get to mingle a lot with other people. You know what I don't like about offices? I have PTSD every time. You know that, that, that smell of morning coffee? Some people love it because it's kind of, it's that kick, in, kick start of the morning. But for me, it's just PTSD that it's a, uh, oh, I'm rolling up to the office again that coffee smell. Yeah, it's that burned coffee smell in the crappy machine. Okay, let's go, kick throughs. It's easier within the office too. Yeah, fair enough. I used to find that I used to get um, too distracted. Yeah, you can focus more. Yeah, I actually, I got too distracted at the office because my role um, was, oh, I'd been in the company so long that a lot of people would come to me for just any old weird problem that they could think of that they didn't know who else to ask. And also some of the older systems where people had left and the old admins had left, but I was still around and I, I knew how to operate some of the older systems. They oh, Jeff, can you do this? Jeff, can you do that? And I, one thing that I wasn't very good at was uh, saying no. So I found that working from home, I could actually get a lot more work done. So everyone's a little bit different. <clears throat> you got more distractions at home, Alec. What do you got? You got um, partner, kids, Xbox, all those things, all of the above. All of them playing at the same time. <laughs> all right. We've got one more round left, team. Yes. Coffee, breakfast, coffee. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. One more round, 10 more minutes, you can do this. We can get through, we know exactly what we're doing now. So we're just gonna get through the reps, get through the rounds, get that heart rate up, keep sweating. I think potentially this t-shirt's making me sweat a bit more. It's a heavy, it's a heavy cotton. <sighs> okay, Cossack squats. I'm gonna upgrade these now. Remember how I mentioned the upgrade to the Cossack squats at the beginning? What I'm gonna do is keep my hips low. So I'm gonna get down nice and low. And when I'm gonna keeping my hips low, make my way across. So you see, I'm not standing up into, a, into that wide-legged A shape anymore. I'm just gonna get my hips low and make my way across then down. So keep them low, as low as my hip mobility and my, my ankle mobility will allow. 
So this is all about opening up the hips, the strength in the glute meads, pushing the knees outwards. Don't let your knees collapse in with this one. The knees go outwards, hips, quad strength, leg strength, everything. Balance, core. Awesome. Whew. Hips feel that one now, good. All right, dive bombers. This is our shoulder mobility, shoulder strength. We're working, we're moving. All right, just catching my breath in this nice, this nice fan breeze now. Alec, have you been able to do any of our workouts on YouTube? Uh, that was gonna be a question of mine. Get into the push-up position, wide feet, push the butt up, straight legs, and get down. So I'm gonna try and keep straight legs throughout this whole movement. What's bending are my elbows and shoulders. So elbows and shoulders, I'm hinging at the hip. You see that, I'm pushing the butt up, keeping the legs nice and straight. I'm, I'm stretching my hamstrings and calves at the bottom as well, as I get into that downward dog. Pushing back, heels flat, you know, forward. You see, I'm pushing forward with my ankles, fully extending the ankles there now. And then I'm flexing the ankles. Nice stretch. Good. We've got time for one more. Nice. Good team, good. All right, jump lunges. Let's see how, how high we can get this heart rate now. Lots of sweat, lots of hydration required. Make sure you're drinking. Good, 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 good. Hey, B-Foot! Thank you so much. Alec, welcome in. B-Foot's just gifted you. Okay, let's go. Forward lunge, we're gonna do the jumps. Jump lunges. B-Foot, how are you feeling, mate? Have you done today's run? I was gonna, um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to balance myself out because I realize that as well as the runs that you're doing that, I, that I've got myself on too, I'm also doing 100 gifts. Hey, I'm also doing these workouts. So I wanna try and balance it out. So I might go 5K today. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run in these barefoot shoes, B-foot. I'm not sure how long you may have been lurking for. I've got some new barefoots, which I'm testing out. Oh, four seconds. Sorry, I don't know why I thought I heard a beat then. Good, here we go. Oh, quads feeling good. Yeah, morning, mate. How are you? You just got here? Yeah, yeah. So they're pretty cool. Um, it feels like I'm, I'm just wearing socks. Like I'm able to splay my toes. And it's interesting because there's like no heel, heel stack height. Um, and my feet are so flexible. I can just move them wherever I want. So the first thing I'm noticing is that when it comes to things like Cossack squats, I'm having to do a lot more work with my toes. So instead of just like standing in a shoe and having the upper portion of the shoe apply tension so I can just push against the, the upper, if that makes sense, instead of just being able to push against the edge of the shoe and the whole shoe staying steady, I'm now having to use my little toes a bit more to spread and press down. So I'm fighting for stability by using my toes. Yeah, you have to work more for stability, correct. But I feel like it's, it's not a bad thing. It may even not be the case of having to work more, but I'm, I'm a lot more mindful now of stability. I'm less just letting it happen or I'm more I'm more taking note of what my toes are doing. Probably because they're doing something different. So it's, it's good. I like them. So I'm looking forward. I might do a five, like a four or a 5K run on the treddy just with these. Because the number one thing that I'm a little bit worried about is just the extra impact on my tendons. So one, two, knee, shuttle. Yeah, I wouldn't be foot. I'm definitely not thinking, it's not even on my mind. Hey, God, it's not on my mind to do this marathon with barefoots, hell no. But 
I might actually start doing some of my recovery runs in them. So depending on how this feels after, just like a 5K recovery run, green zone, zone two, zone three, do them in barefoot. And then I'll do the shoes that I've been training a lot with for the longer distances with the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Fine, you smell? That's true. Also, because like just, just catching, um, so Alec, recovery runs. Uh, so if you're on one of my programs, you'll see what I mean. Recovery runs are generally a low heart rate zone. So zone two or zone three. Low mileage, five to, five to nine kilometers-ish. And you're focusing on breathing. Breathing and a steady cadence. So you're just, you're basically going by feel. You're going by what feels natural. Now, <clears throat> for people that are new to running, the idea of a recovery run is, is kind of strange because for a lot of people, when they start doing work like this, the, the green zone is a very, very narrow zone. And it's actually quite hard, hard to land in it. When you're new to working out, it's very easy for your body to just shoot straight into the orange and the red. You're gonna put a little bit of work in and your body's gonna work super hard to try and keep up. Um, so what you need to be doing is over time, practicing at bringing the intensity down so that you can spend more time in the green zones, in the lower heart rate zones. And what happens is that your body adapts to that and becomes a hell of a lot more efficient in those aerobic zones, which are the ones you can hold for hours on end. So that's where you want to be for recovery runs. You want to be teaching your body to, to recover back down again. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll do, I'll do one now. I'll do a recovery one after this. Jump ropes, let's go. Martha Stewart, this shirt is actually quite, it's a, it's a thick cotton, it's a heavy cotton. So it's making me sweat a hell of a lot. It isn't actually that hot in here, but the sweat's just flowing. I changed my shorts so I could commit fully to the, to the daddy shirt. You gonna skip today's or shorten it? Oh, you've got the cold that Lucy had? Yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what, what sort of symptoms are you showing B-foot? You remember my rule of thumb? If it's above the neck, so if it's like a sniffly nose, if it's a bit of like a head cold, sinus is blocked, I'd still, I'd still say you could do a light effort. Shorten it, three kilometers, four kilometers, 30 minutes, whatever, whatever you, you, you need. Um, sorry. I'll chat to you after your phone call, B-foot. Let's get these kick throughs through. Team, we've got 45 seconds. One more, one more move this whole workout. So let's give it everything you got. So I'm gonna set up, knees off the floor, right hand up, left forward, left hand up, right leg forward. This one's a little about core strength, shoulder strength. A lot of being able to breathe through your, through your belly with your diaphragm. Ten more seconds. Let's go. Good. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Good job. So team, well done. I've got my heart rate up nice and high with that one. I'm gonna walk it out. So if you did that one and you felt if you felt you couldn't quite get through the 30 seconds, or the 45 seconds, sorry, stick at it. This is one where you can choose to either stop it early um, to add some more rest or continue resting as you get into the next one. Just to give yourself that, you know, that 30, or even like a 40 second, 40 second split. That's not Lamar maths, but you know what I mean. Or if you found you did all 45 seconds there and your heart rate was returning back to the blue throughout the 30 second rest, 
that's time for a purple. That's where you're gonna step that up. So thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube. If you wanna check out who I've been chatting to live, twitch.tv forward slash fit for purpose, and you can, you can chat with us on the day. Have a good one.